Take a trip back in time to 1987 and 8-bit platform games ruled the day and the night. But there was one plump Italian plumber and his palette-swapped sidekick leading the pack. The Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Then came a game from Time Warp Productions and Rainbow Arts starring exact opposites of Mario and Luigi, the great Gianna sisters. The brothers are history. Wow. So for whatever reason, Nintendo did not approve and the game was quickly pulled from store shelves. But the thing is, it was actually an awesome game on its own and the word was already out there so it didn't just die. The cat was out of the bag and there was nothing Nintendo could do to stop the spread of the game through less than legal methods. But that's a video for another day because on this December day, we're looking at the great Gianna Sisters Christmas Special Edition for MS-DOS. And if you've got an eyebrow raised wondering why you've never heard of it, well, just put that eyebrow back down and let's take a look at what the balls this really is. In 1998, a German programmer by the name of Rainer Sinch was working on a game with his group Myth. Their plan was to enter it into the Mecha and Symposium demo scene party of 1998 in the 32K game competition. The most important requirement was that the game only take no more than 32 kilobytes of space. The game Myth chose to make was based on the mythical Great Gianna Sisters game from 1987 for the Commodore 64. While the game wasn't a complete Gianna Sisters remake, it was still an amazing result for 32K and ended up winning them the competition that year. The game ended up being successful outside of the competition as well and the team released it as freeware and continued to work on it, expanding it much further than 32K over time. Later that year, a special Christmas version of the game was released which included new music, levels, artwork, and more. Not less, more. The game imitates the sound of the SID chip and Amiga chipset, but it uses either the Gravis Ultrasound, Pro Audio Spectrum, Windows Sound System, or Sound Blaster cards to achieve this effect. Once you select the appropriate sound device for your system, the game starts up with the classic Gianna Sisters scrolling text and graphics, along with some catchy mod music. You have the option to play single player or play single player by pressing either one or two. A very thoughtful feature for those of us with an illogical aversion to pressing the number one in order to start single player games. You are then dropped into the first level and let loose into a Christmassy variation of the dream world of previous Gianna Sisters games, with an Amiga-like version of Jingle Bells playing in the background and snow cluttering up the screen at random. That's okay though, because the refresh rate of 85 hertz that's used in the game makes the snow and smooth scrolling look absolutely smooth and snowy, especially on a nice CRT monitor. This also means that the game is a bit of a pain to emulate in programs like DOSBox and it's also quite difficult to record properly from a capture device. What you're watching in this video was the best I could come up with running it on a Pentium 2 system with VGA output and S-video conversion blah 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 stuff and it unfortunately does not do it justice at all. The controls are as simple as it gets. You use the arrow keys for everything, including pressing up to jump. I am not a big fan of the jump button placement and you can't remap it in game that I know of so you just gotta deal with it. The gameplay is what you'd expect from the Gianna sisters, that is it shamelessly rips off Super Mario Brothers in nearly every way. You move from left to right with no option to go back through the level once it's been scrolled off the screen and avoid anything that's deadly, which of course is everything. You can jump on certain parts of enemies that look squishy like these eyeball things and bee things and owl things, but not the friendly looking bouncy balls so don't even try to get the Gianna sisters to touch any balls because they will just die and scream in the most horribly grating way possible. I hate that scream. You can also smash into these blocks to collect diamonds which you know are good for you because they're in an old school platform game and they don't result in your death. This all sounds well and good, but then I realized that the controls take some serious getting used to. So much so that I never got used to them at all. 
Although there are no controls for running like in Super Mario Bros., it often feels like you are running and you'll still have that inertia thing to deal with when stopping or changing directions. Even with this, it plays very differently from Super Mario Bros. and I was never able to get a grip on it at all. Constantly struggling to find my footing on even the simplest of platforms when it just shouldn't be this difficult. It's just too freaking touchy and strange, and the hit detection is rarely spot on. I just felt like I was walking on eggshells the entire time. If you happen to make it through the first level, you continue on to the biggest surprise in gaming history, the second level. Holy crap. This is actually the first time I've ever seen this in a platform game, and I've gotta say, this right here is what games need nowadays, second levels. But do these sarcastic remarks mean I recommend playing this? Sadly, it does not. Besides the terrible controls and infuriating enemy and platform hitboxes, there is one major thing missing from this Christmas version and the other DOS versions by these guys, and that is power-ups. Normally in Great Gianna Sisters, you'd be able to jump into certain blocks that would provide you with a power-up that transforms you into Courtney Love. While in real life, I would never wish this fate on my worst enemy, in Gianna Sisters, it was extremely useful since it allowed you to be a stronger Mario ripoff and shoot projectiles and stuff. But in these versions by myth, nope, none of that. And that kind of sucks because it's kind of lame and you may as well just play the original Gianna Sisters games in this case. Here, you're just stuck with a pretty straightforward platformer with Gianna Sisters elements, some out of place yet rockin' Christmas music, floaty controls, and floaty animated snowflakes. There really is no reason to play this other than for the curiosity, because it's just a watered down version of the original Gianna Sisters on the Commodore 64 and Amiga. And it makes a pretty weak Christmas game too when you think about the content, but I guess calling it Gianna Sisters Animated Snowflake Special Edition doesn't really have the same ring to it. Yeah, I respect what the developers did when they made the 32K demo, and it's cool that they released a freeware game like this. But sadly, the actual gameplay just never finds its footing. In more ways than one.